Welcome, I'm Brian Buchanan from Alberta Sono and the University of Alberta Department of Critical Care Medicine. This is a comprehensive review of color Doppler. Anyone who uses color Doppler knows that it can be both exciting and frustrating and even misleading. It unlocks a whole new aspect of ultrasound. One at times can be, that can be also very confusing. I want to break down why how and when, and really explore some of the nuances that are often missed in discussions around application of color Doppler. Of course, when we talk about color Doppler, it merits mentioning that this is often used in supplement to 2D or brightness mode imaging uh, to supplement, to really allow us to see uh, rapidly moving elements, especially those that are not processed by 2D or B mode imaging. By now, you've probably come across some train plane or car analogy describing the Doppler shift, but really at its most basic idea is that there is a frequency of sound change as the source uh, approaches the receiver or departs from the receiver. And when the source approaches the listener, the sound wave becomes compressed or shortens in relation to the initial frequency. And when the source departs, the sound wave lengthens. This is exploited by color Doppler to assess both speed and direction. When the blood cells move towards the transducer, the sound is reflected with a higher frequency than the transmitted frequency. And this is registered as a red shift. Opposite, when blood cells are moving away from the transducer, the Doppler shift is negative. The reflected frequency is lower than the transmitted frequency. And from this, the ultrasound machine can register essentially centimeters per second or velocity, and of course a vector direction. But more simply, the acronym often used is BART, blue away and red towards. As you can see here in this uh, flow, there's actually some aortic regurgitation happening at the level of the aortic valve with some blood flow towards the probe during diastole, which again is aortic regurgitation. Essentially, we use color Doppler to recognize, uh, in, in, well, in cardiac ultrasound, to recognize regurgitation and stenosis. Okay, but also, also often used in vascular ultrasound to look at uh, vascular flow imaging and uh, evidence of um, abnormalities. In this apical four chamber here, we can see that there is diastolic flow from the RA into the RV, representing that red shift, okay, which again is flow towards the probe. We can also see here that there's actually evidence of regurgitation with some flow that's happening in reverse of the probe, and that is that registering as a blue shift with also some other colors mixed in, which, which we will get to. So by now you're probably thinking, hmm, it probably depends on direction of the probe then, this whole blue away, blue away, red towards thing. So in the crog artery, depending on where that probe is positioned, you can look the arterial flow look red or blue. You may be wondering, why is there this scale? And so these numbers, so each side of the scale is called the Nyquist limit. Okay, so in here we're seeing plus 67 or minus 67 centimeters per second of actual blood flow. And this is typical for cardiac imaging, somewhere between 60 to 70 centimeters per second. Be much smaller for blood vessels, it's plus 15 or minus 15, as flows can be much slower. And this is implications for detection of flow at different speeds. So when the blood flow is parallel to the sound beam, you register 100% of that entire velocity. When it's anything less than parallel, something different happens, okay? And that is you register less than 100% of that velocity. Here is the equation uh, for Doppler shift, which we're often solving for V, our velocity. And that cosine in that equation plays a really important uh, part of that calculation of Doppler shift. And if your cosine degree is 90, that is that your, your direction of your uh, Doppler interrogation and your vascular flow are 90 degrees, then you register zero, which is black. That is zero Doppler shift. Okay, so we can see here in this abdominal aorta that's proximal, that there are areas that appear black. And this is 90 degrees to that, level, to that interrogation. Here we see the radial artery. And we can tell in that little white box, there's areas where it appears there's no flow. But that's actually incorrect. There is flow, just that again, the cosine of 90 here means that no flow was registered. So ideally in parallel, a cosine of zero 
equals one, and that's 100% of, me of the measured velocity. You can find these areas throughout the body. Here's an area of the aortic arch where the flow is 90 degrees again, and the sound beam registers no flow. I'm often asked, why then do we use color boxes when it comes to the personal lung axis? Because this seems counterintuitive because the flow here appears to be 90 degrees to the sound beam. But that's actually not exactly correct. Because these views offer a lot about the size and the nature of the jet, whether it's concentric or centrally directed or eccentric, which means off axis. Most often these lesions are truly uh, seldom 90 degrees from the beam. So it's still a useful vantage point and offers a lot of information about how and why those regurgitant or stenotic lesions occur. Next, we come to color flow aliasing, really the important part of color Doppler. Well, what if blood flow exceeds the velocity in either direction? You get aliasing or essentially a mosaic pattern of color. In fact, the scale reaches around from that very light blue to white to almost high yellow. In fact, you start showing the highest velocities of both positive and negative, and you kind of lose the sense of the directionality. So here we can see in, on the right side of the heart, there's this trichester regurgitation. And what you're seeing here is that color mixing or that mosaic pattern of colors, which tells you there's some really high velocities heading in the opposite direction as a regurgitant lesion. If you can imagine, a regurgitant lesion is very much like a stenotic lesion in reverse, where blood flow typically gets very fast as it, as it squeezes through that tiny orifice. If this is still not making sense, I think this propeller can give you some information. If you watch what happens as it spins, initially you'll be able to track the direction and even sense of a frequency of that propeller, but at a certain point, you'll lose track of it. And at a certain point, you'll eventually be, be missing information and your sampling will not be able to adequately understand the directionality and velocity of this propeller. This is what happens when red cells are traveling too fast for the frame rate or the sampling frequency, which is matched to your Nyquist limit. This topic often swerves into, topic, into discussions around pulse repetition frequency or PRF, but let's just say for the sake of keeping it simple, PRF is, is another concept that helps describe your Nyquist limit and they're, and they're related to describe the scale of how we can uh, measure color Doppler. You may wonder, well, don't you see a mix of color with bidirectional flow? This tracing here shows a uh, floor bristle in the hepatic vein. In the bottom left is a Doppler, uh, spectral Doppler example, where we see blood flow above and below the baseline, representing blood flow towards the probe and away from the probe. But notice when looking at the color map here, that when red, black, and blue are next to each other on the image, floor bristle is present, often going from red to black and has to go through the black zone. When light blue and green are adjacent, then aliasing, aliasing is present, and this is going outside of the color map. Color Doppler functions by sending multiple short pulses across the region of interest. Every pulse sent needs a waiting period for listening in which you're not sampling. Hence, the wider the box, the longer it takes. So generally, try to keep the boxes focused on the area of interest at a time. When we're examining valves for regurgitant lesions, our sonic lesions, we need to be very careful with how those boxes are placed. And what we're looking for again is that mosaic pattern of blood as it speeds up um, to pass through that regurgitant lesion. The color box generally for regurgitant lesions should include in front of the valve and also into the receiving chamber. And this gives you a sense of capturing that entire jet. And of course, because you're 2D image is essentially two dimensions, then you often need to pan through the actual valve itself to make sure you capture the largest jet. In stenosis, it's the opposite. So you can see here on these images that there is evidence of mitral stenosis in both of these. And we're looking at before the valve, but largely after the valve for, the, for where that jet goes. So these color boxes are placed across the, the various valves in different views because we know that color Doppler is sensitive to changes in velocity. In one view, a regurgitant lesion may appear small because it's off axis of the beam. In other views, it may look quite impressive. Further, it's often helpful to put the color box on 
and sweep through the valve to make sure you catch the most impressive or largest amount of regurgitant arsenotic lesion. And remember that ultrasound is 2D and valves are 3D. Another overlooked area of color Doppler is the gain and color scale. Not 2D gain, but color gain. The color scale, or again the Nyquist limit, can both enhance or limit detection of blood flow. If the Nyquist limit is high or set to a high velocity, you'll be less sensitive as blood is less likely to alias. As a consequence of blood flow, may be harder to detect. And remember that closer to zero velocity, the more black it is. If the Nyquist limit is low, or low velocity in the scale, the color box will be very sensitive as blood flow will, will alias at lower velocities. And frankly, it'll just be easier to see those lower velocity um, blood flows. In both of these examples, we're looking at portal vein flow. And on image left, we see that we can really faintly register any portal venous flow. And on the right, we see that steady uh, hum of the, of the portal vein uh, with a lower Nyquist limit. In cardiac imaging, this has fairly important ramifications. If the Nyquist is too low, everything can alias. It's overly sensitive and there's too much noise. It's really hard to appreciate signal at this level. An appropriate Nyquist limit for cardiac imaging is usually around 60 to 70 centimeters per second. Unless you're looking at blood flow across inter interatrial septum, which because of low pressures has low flows, then the velocity should be set around 20 to 30 centimeters per second. Here again are three separate examples of different set Nyquist limits. You can see how setting the Nyquist limit low can confuse signal and noise, while setting it too high can also dampen the signal. So it's important to be aware of this color scale whenever using color Doppler. And to really hit home why, again, why this matters is that when the Nyquist is, Nyquist is low, the practitioner may falsely conclude that the regurgitation or even stenosis is more severe than it truly is. And when it's too high, it can make the jet appear smaller and lead to underestimation or gross underquantification. In eccentric MR, this becomes even more complicated. As noted before, select jets can be underappreciated by color Doppler. This eccentric MR jet on screen is a wall-hugging jet and probably looks less impressive than it would be if it was centrally directed or concentric. This can be more subtle the more eccentric it is, as the machine may pick up only a small amount of aliasing. Moving on to color gain, similar to 2D ultrasound, Color gain can allow amplification, amplification of signal and noise, similar to 2D. The goal is to maximize signal here, but with a gain too high, we can get what's been called color confetti, which is a color equivalent of distortion as played through an amplifier. But with a gain too low, we can see a signal that's relatively muted. This is shown similarly here in the apical four chamber view with the trichester regurgitin jet. Again, with a gain too low, we can minimize that signal. But with a gain too high, we have troubles here separating signal and noise. And these principles apply equally well to vascular ultrasound. Set the gain too high, you get confetti, and you get that spilling of color outside of the vascular walls. And you set it too low, and you barely get a signal. And this really can be optimized on most diagnostic or point of care machines. There are a host of other factors that affect color Doppler from things like the size of the orifice to the pressure differential across chambers. Again, this is about how that pressure difference is converted to a velocity. And if the velocity is less likely to alias, then that signal is less. So very much with that eccentric jet, which registers less of a velocity because the angle is non-parallel to the beam. We do not cover wall filters, which can block lower frequency Doppler shifts. Also keep in mind that when the heart rate is very high, it can be extremely hard to pick out regurgitant and stenotic lesions. In this case, the heart rate is 120. And there is some TR here, but it is very, very hard to see with, the, with a very high heart rate limiting our ability to visualize the aliasing. So it's probably more optimal to have the heart rate more near normal when Doppler is applied to examine the valves. Finally, power Doppler. Power Doppler is the most sensitive kind of color Doppler. It does not tell direction, really only flow. And it's independent of velocity and direction of flow. And really independent of angle. And so it's often used in technically challenging areas. Here I'm applying it to the kidney to look for evidence of flow. As the traditional color Doppler fails to register much 
we can see that there are tiny specks of flow within the kidney. Again, uh, very sensitive. Uh, the most complex that I would use this would be on the abdominal wall prior to paracentesis if the abdominal wall is fairly thick. We've covered a lot of concepts here from uh, the traditional kind of BART blue away, red towards the evident, the discussions around Doppler shift, how that color scale can be changed. And you can even actually invert the blue and red on most machines. Also, we covered the Nyquist limit in aliasing. And uh, we talked about adjust Nyquist limits for looking at different structures, whether it's the ventricles, even the atria or blood vessels. We also talked about how pressure differences pressure differences are really important for generating those high velocities or frankly, low velocities. But that's all I have for now, but I hope addressed, I addressed all your burning questions in color Doppler and appreciate you watching this video. Bye for now.